Subhash, in trying to get to bedrock of reality, a question I like to ask myself and, and my friends mm -hmm. is, what are the most fundamental things if you, that can't be reduced to anything else? So if I asked you from a Hindu or Vedic philosophy point of view, what's fundamental in the cosmos? According to the Vedic or the Hindu view, what is fundamental is this interconnection between the outer and the inner. And this uh, connection between the outer and the inner, because this connection is an embodiment of the manner in which the ground consciousness has projected itself and become reality. And this is viewed uh, in, in, in a variety of different ways. One of them is that just as you have the outer sun uh, so far away from the earth, 108 uh, times its diameter away from the earth, you have the inner sun, which in some rhythmic way is 108 times the names of the god or the goddess, away from your physical body, which is like the planet Earth. And therefore, these become the starting point of the approach that one uses within the Hindu or the Vedic tradition to situate oneself in one's own reality and find connections with the larger whole. And uh, this apart, there is the view that the physical universe is infinite and there are infinite cycles of creation and destruction, and uh, the uh, cycle from the beginning of the large creation is about 13 or 14 billion years, which is similar to uh, scientific estimates, but there are even larger cycles. And uh, many centuries ago, Indian philosophers, uh, if you will, had postulated that there are infinite number of solar systems. There are infinite uh, places where life exists, and therefore there is recursive, uh, recursive reality. That when, you're, when you're using the term infinite, are you using it in its literal modern Cantorian sense of real infinite or just very large numbers? In the sense of uncountable, that is the sense that the sages used. Now, clearly, they were probably not using it uh, in the modern mathematical sense, but they do speak of uh, uncountability, mm. of infiniteness. And they also speak about how from the infinite, infinite is born. That infinity has this uh, counterintuitive property mm. that uh, it, uh, it, en it can engender further infinities. So let's look at some of the things you said and try to focus on individual aspects of it. First of all, you talk about the, the outer and the inner, but in terms of the question, what's fundamental, it sounds like you're saying the only thing that's really fundamental is consciousness because other things, the physical world, emerge out of that consciousness. Is that right? Absolutely. In fact, uh, one of the Vedic prayers is, lead me for, from... Uh, mortality to immortality. And what does it really mean? Mortality is whatever is physical because whatever is physical is uh, born and dies. But there is an immortal element to oneself which is neither born nor dies. And, therefore, and that is the consciousness. Uh, uh, okay, but you could also have uh, an immortal, uh, mortal um, relationship, certainly the Judeo-Christian traditions, which is seeking an immortality, but in those traditions, the physical world is, is equally real to some non-physical world, so it's maybe a more dualistic sense. But are you saying that in the, 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 the Vedic philosophy, you, you don't have that same kind of dualism, but rather consciousness is the ultimate reality, and somehow it spews forth the physical world? Uh, according to the Vedic view, the consciousness is the ultimate reality, and it projects the physical world. But the physical world is the body of God, if you will, or body of this infinite 
interpenetrating consciousness, which is how uh, how divinity is visualized in the Hindu tradition. And therefore, it's a magical thing. And the doorway to understanding uh, the mystery, if you will, is through this embodied self of divinity. And therefore, it's not something that one's got to take as a illusion, as something which is irrelevant. It is central. This is, this is, if this is the problem, if this is the mystery, if this is the difficulty, this is also the solution. Mm -hmm. And this is from where we can come to self-understanding. Now, to look at the physical world, you said it is infinite or uncountable. And that is both in spatial dimension and in temporal dimension. Right. Is that right? Yeah, it is uh, uncountable both in the spatial uh, dimension as well as in the temporal dimension. Then that's why we have all these cycles of creation and destruction of the universe or of different island universes, something like uh, the multiverse that uh, people have been talking about. And, uh, and therefore, this cycle keeps on going on, and one might wonder then, how is this uh, evolution explained, or why, why is it even there? And that is explained as some kind of a cosmic play, that if we didn't have it, then we would have nothing. And it is as if consciousness is playing a game with itself, and we are a part of that game. And rather than feel that it amounts to nothing. Games are, after all, exciting. You know, we, we, we like to see people play sports, but we also like to see even animals, you know, kids and children and puppies play with each other. So that, that playfulness is the essential element which is supposed to uh, take us to understanding and also which has, which has, an, which has an aesthetic element. It is something which is enjoyable, which is beautiful in its own way. If the universe is infinite in time, and the, but is derivative from consciousness, how does that articulate? Because if it's infinite in time, there was never a time, by definition, that it didn't exist. But yet consciousness is the cause of it. So you have consciousness being causally explanatory of the universe, but never a time where consciousness existed before the universe. Consciousness is the ground, and you, one cannot explain how consciousness is uh, causally related, because if one could, then consciousness itself would be physical. It will be like the embodied projection of itself. And therefore, the idea of paradox is central to the Vedic view. And uh, this is something that keeps on coming up again and again. In one of the uh, Upanishadic texts, it's stated, the gods love what is paradoxical and they detest what is self-evident because the mystery could not be something very simple, a simple formula, that this is what the formula behind the evolution of the uh, universe is.